Welcome back everyone. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the creative side of what we do with these things. So when we take photographs, what is it that we're striving for? What keeps us moving? What is it that we're trying to do exactly? So this idea of striving for perfection, and what does that mean in terms of creative work or in our case, photography? Some people, not all, but some people, and I imagine that you are in this bunch because you enjoy watching these types of videos that I make, you want to do something new. You want to do something different. You want to take your skills to a new place. In other words, you want to pick up the camera and shoot something today that you couldn't do yesterday and you want to continue that tomorrow. You're striving to achieve something with the work that you do. Now, I say some people because let's be honest, in the world of photography, there's a lot of people who do it as a hobby. They're just happy pushing the button and making the camera work and they get into the technical details of it, but they're not really striving for that and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a hobby for them. So what this is addressing is it's to the few of you that are really interested in the creative side of things. I'm personally not a huge huge fan of the word perfection when we talk about these things. And because in the past when I have employed this notion of perfection, it usually means I'm trying to get an image of something, be it a landscape, being a portrait, and I exhaust all these different options. And then I look at my work and I'm like, oh, I don't like this. It could be better. And so you, you keep diving into it and revisiting it. And eventually you start chasing your tail on these types of things because there is no ideal of perfection. But a word that I do like to use that I got from my friend John Free a few years ago is the whole idea of perspective pursuing of excellence. If you're not familiar with John Free, he's got an amazing YouTube channel. He's an incredible street photographer, educator. He's a bit of a character and he's a really good friend of mine. A couple of years ago, we met in Los Angeles. I kind of reached out to him just because I knew his videos and I asked if I could get a photography lesson with him. And we spent the day talking about all things photography. We've done this a few times now and I can't wait till this is all over with and we can travel again because I'm dying to do it again. But I want to share a little clip of something that he told me in terms of this pursuit for excellence. Forget about the style. Brisson's style was excellence. Yeah. Excellence in craft. Excellence in execution. Excellence in showing the shot. Excellence in thinking about the shot, that he wanted to give it to you. That's a style I want. But I don't want anybody to look at my photograph and say, oh, that's a John Free because I can tell how he tilted it. Right, right. No, 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 I don't yeah. want that. So I want to share this with you. And I've shown this in the videos before. This is my copy of Henri Cartier-Bresson's seminal book, The Decisive Moment. This is not an original. This is a reissue that came out a few years ago that I bought in Los Angeles. Uh, it doesn't stay in print very long when it's out. It's usually a limited run. So if you see it and it does get reprinted, make sure you buy it. This, to me, is as close to the idea of perfection that I've ever seen in photography. And that is a testament not just to Henri Cartier-Bresson and his style of working, but it's also a testament to this book and the way it's put together, the way the images relate to each other, the concept of the book being the decisive moment, the fact that there's no photograph on the cover. It's a slipcase with a Henri Matisse illustration. It's amazing. Not only does Cartier-Bresson give us some written word into the insights of his approach to photography, but it is amazing in terms of the images that are in here. You've probably seen a lot of these, but my point is, is that you have a photographer here that operates on such a high level of consistency. Another interesting side note about the decisive moment is this was not a massive success when it came out. In fact, it didn't sell very well at all. It took a number of years for people to realize the greatness that was this book. And it's an interesting note because quality and popularity are not exactly the same thing. I'm just throwing that in there. But I want to compare our friend HCB to another photographer, just for a little point of contrast another favorite of mine, a gentleman by the name of W. Eugene Smith. I've talked a lot about him on these videos. In fact, I did a whole dedicated video to him a few years ago where I talked about a lot of these things. They're both incredible photographers. In fact, two of the top tier photographers, I think, to ever grace this planet, but they were very different in a number of ways. W. Eugene Smith, I think, struggled more. He was a little more human in some ways, he had trouble working with clients when he worked with magazines. He And it wasn't, it was lazy. It was the complete opposite. He would become so involved in a project and so obsessed with it that he would just keep producing work. And in fact, to the point where it would be literally thousands of images, sometimes tens of thousands of images. And there was no cohesive way to like present that in a book or an exhibition or anything that people could digest. And so it's a very different photographer in those terms, but both photographers certainly striving for excellence. But I actually believe 
that W. Gene Smith got caught up in that whole idea of striving for perfection because that's what happens. It always ends up making us chase our tails to some degree. Even this incredible photographer we're talking about, I think that limited his ability to actually get work out at times. I want to talk a little bit about how this applies to mere mortals like you and me. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like you. It is a place to explore new skills. You can deepen existing passions and basically just get lost in creativity. Are you holed up at home? Spontaneous acts of creativity may help break up the routine of a day spent indoors. Explore some workshops and classes to help you get out of that rut. So one class that I've been looking at a lot this week is street photography, unlock the secrets of composition, color, and confidence. This one is taught by Craig Whitehead, who you guys might actually know. I've featured him on this show a number of times. He goes under the moniker Six Street Under on various social platforms. This class is excellent, as I would expect no less from Craig. He's a fabulous photographer with a really good understanding of the history of what's come before him, but he adds his own personal spin on the top. He is an excellent photographer. This class is going to teach you things like having confidence, preparing to shoot, being able to pre-visualizing the scene, capturing fleeting moments playing with abstraction, making selects, editing, and everything. And so I really recommend this. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Even if you already had a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. So click on the link below and check it out. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks over at Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I'm talking about two photographers who, as great as they are, they lived in a very different time than what we live in today. Both those guys published images in things like Life Magazine, and that's how people consumed news and information. That's how people were aware of their work. Today, we live in a completely different world. We're not on a weekly publication schedule with a magazine. We have the internet and the rate of consumption for not only news, but also for any kind of media, including photography, has just exploded. It's just so different, the whole cycle, than what those guys guys had to deal with. Now, I still think that the same creative terms apply when we're comparing those two things, but you do have to realize that they live in a very different time. I think the biggest problem that we have today is not the fact that everything is sped up or that it's more competitive, it seems, but it really is the technology behind things. And it's not a problem in terms of that I don't like the technology. It's just a problem in terms of the technology can be distracting to us. Give me an example. I have a phone that not only shoots pretty good resolution images, but it allows me to take images in the dark. And if you look at what Sony has been able to do, not only in terms of of autofocus but allowing you to shoot up to 30 frames a second of 50 megapixel images in the new A1. That's incredible. I mean, it adds a whole new dimension to the whole idea of spray and pray. Now, is that going to get you a perfect photograph? Well, no, the photographer's still in charge there. Now, don't get me wrong because I think the technology is exciting in that there are things in these cameras that enable us to do things that we couldn't do before or at least more easily than we were able to do before. I don't know if you've actually ever gone and looked up what cameras and film types were available in the 1950s, but let's just say it was all manual focus and film speeds, you're talking about an ISO of 100 being high speed. And it's almost comical today to think in those terms because eventually it got bumped up to 400, you could start pushing things to 800, but now I can shoot up to 12,500 on any of these cameras with better noise than what I had with film grain in the 800 to 1600 range on really old film types. So just in, I know that's sensitivity performance alone, there are other things as well, including autofocus, but my point is, is that we have it easy. The problem is, is that our business of photography is largely dictated by Japanese camera manufacturers and what they think that we need in cameras. And that's not bad, but it's easy to get caught up in that. This has been especially intense over the last two or three years as we've made the push towards mirrorless systems. This is something that all the companies are doing now, and I get it. When you invest into technology, a lot of money goes into R&D. There's a lot that goes into it, and you need to have a return on that investment. So I understand that these companies need to sell cameras. I just want to make sure that you understand that creativity and having messages of, well, this will enable you to do X, Y, or Z. Those are kind of two different things. But the pitfall here is that I've seen a lot of photographers and look, I have done it myself a few times. It's really easy to waste an enormous amount of energy and time worrying about things that, oh, well, I don't really like Instagram. It's too hard to grow on there anymore. I don't have a specific type of lens or I need this kind of camera before I'm able to do things. Creative work is something 
and it's very different. This is something that I've been actually working on for a few months now. I'm gonna do a small series on creativity, so there's gonna be more videos like this. Would love to know what you guys think though, so drop me a comment. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.